Hello, everyone. Welcome to the April edition of the Math Moment. My name is Matt Fannin, and I'm the math specialist here at the ESC of Central Ohio. Uh, today, we're going to continue our conversation on the uh, NCTM's effective mathematical teaching practices. So we took a look at the first four. Uh, today, we're going to round out the list, take a close look at number five, purposeful questioning. And six, seven, and eight kind of correlate with some of the practices we've already discussed. So we'll go ahead and highlight those today as we round out our list. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, number five, pose purposeful questions. All right, we really want to expand the type of questioning that we are proposing to our students um, and kind of get away from just the recalling facts or um, you know, asking questions to get a singular answer. All right, we want to propose purposeful questions um, that not only assess, but advance students' reasoning and sense-making skills, right? So we want those questions to encourage students to explain and reflect on their own thinking as an essential component to mathematical discourse, right? It's okay to gather that information, to to go through some procedures or to recall facts or definitions. However, we want to expand it, right? We want students to be able to explain or elaborate and clarify their thinking, right? Um, and we wanna encourage them to reflect or justify their reasoning at a much deeper level, right? And create maybe a viable argument for their work. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do that. We just need to, again, think about how we can purposefully ask students those questions and allow them the opportunity to expand on their thinking and on their reasoning skills. All right, so some of the other um, mathematical teaching practices that we haven't really touched on yet. Um, number six, build procedural fluency from conceptual understanding. Um, this one really comes down to there is no debate on what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Or in this case, should we do procedures first or should we dive deeper into conceptual understanding, right? The research says that um, it's really important that procedural fluency follows and builds on a foundation of conceptual understanding, um, strategic reasoning, and problem-solving skills, right? So procedures should kind of follow after we dive deeper into that conceptual understanding, kind of backwards with what we might think. Um, number seven, support productive struggle in learning mathematics, right? Really important. It kind of ties into the questioning piece and a lot of the other things that we've talked about. Um, it's okay for students to struggle as long as they're doing it productively and not in a frustrating manner, right? Not leaving them um, kind of hanging out to dry, but asking those purposeful questions to really get students to think deeply. And, and again, they may struggle a little bit and that's okay if they do so. And then finally, number eight, elicit and use evidence of student thinking, right? And this is where we're gonna gain feedback as educators. We want um, to have those opportunities to not only have purposeful questioning, but have purposeful assessment, right? Students are demonstrating their knowledge through discourse, through them sharing out um, and their, their reasoning skills and, and, and their reflections. But if we do have specific assessments, that makes sure that they are purposeful as well. Um, but also students are assessing and monitoring their own progress uh, throughout um, each unit or topic, right? By, by assessing themselves and um, identifying areas where they can improve themselves. All right, so that's our list of effective mathematical teaching practices. Uh, if you have any questions on any of those or just any other math topic you'd like to talk about, my information's here on the screen. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, hopefully a wonderful spring break, um, and we'll see you next month.